Welcome back with us, folks, and thank you for taking the time to watch this recap of a play that we uh, we entered yesterday, and we sold most of our uh, most of our calls today. Uh, this is Delta Airlines, and the idea behind this video is to show you how I prepare for a trade, how you can prepare for a trade setups that may occur and what i like to is to set up a, a an alert uh, an alert level that will trigger it will draw the attention my attention on the chart and eventually it will um it will lead to a an entry or just something that will uh, will end up doing nothing so this is the the uh, daily chart on uh, on delta airlines the um the idea is to look for support and resistance and see if there is a possible breakout. Now, I'll show you something here. Back in COVID days, right here, let me take a screenshot of this so I'll show you. Well, we're still in COVID days, but back where COVID occurred in 2020, um, this is when the real drop happened, right? There's a gap here to, uh, in the chart for nothing. And then there is an attempt to rise above it, but it got rejected. You all agree on this, right? So here's a point of attention saying that this here is a point where sellers no longer, well, actually, there you didn't find any buyers here, right? And they sold to a point where it dropped quite a bit. Quite a bit, in fact, there's nobody here. That's the gap. And then we start rising. We're not entering the gap. Get out of here just for a second. I'll continue on this, um, on this uh, little support and resistance just to show you a few things. Um, let's get back here it's moving up oh it's not getting as high as this it's rejecting and then it's taking it's taking off comes back down 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 all this is resistance you agree on this and then down to a certain point right that green line it's a 200 DMA. Down to a certain point, it's struggling and then it flushes underneath. Right? Let's move on. Sorry, I'm not having a hard time with this little button. Um, let's move on here. I'll zoom in here. And let's do this again. I'll show you. We have buyers finding the bottom, but we get to a point where Okay, this is where we flush through the 200 DMA. See that it was bouncing and then it flushed underneath. It rejected it, tried to get above it. It's a 200 DMA, but I'll show you what it is in a second. So, found buyers at one point. Up to a certain point, it's trying. No, nope. it's trying. No, it gets rejected. And then it's trying again and again and again. And now all this, right, is a line that is of interest. Now, usually I start closer to where we are. We start. We started back to COVID uh, debut, but usually I start with this. We all agree that this is a line here. And then I look back, and then I figure out that oh. That's the gap from pre-COVID. Hold on a sec. Take this off for a second. And let's draw the line right here. See this yellow line? Okay. Let's move back. Let's see what happens. Now this is the top that got rejected. And this is what I do. Oh. COVID. It used to be support, and then we flush through. Old support becomes new resistance. So basically, this is 
a line of interest because right now Delta is trying to get above that, but it's not getting through. What I do, I will set an alert to that very number 4167. Now, this is the daily. Let's go to the five minute chart. This is what happened. People were saying, hey, Guru, how did you how did you know it's going to pop? Well, first, you're never sure that it's going to pop. However, it's doing something. And this is what it did. It, I'll show you when it happened. This was prior to the Fed's minutes coming out on um, Wednesday. So everyone is kind of walking on eggs. We're all expecting something to happen, but no one really knows what it is. But see that Delta went precisely on that line. Obviously it triggered the alert, but it rejected the, the line at the top here. Uh, came back down and it went precisely on it again and it rejected it. Now, as it came down, this is where I alerted the entry. Why? Because we're so close to that two o'clock minute um, coming out from the, uh, the Fed's meeting. We're very close to it. People are taking profit because people are not so sure what's going to happen. But um, I was under the impression that they were going to kick, kick the can a little further. And the fact that we had breached just a hair above it and we were really trying any good bullish news would have pushed this further. So this is where I decided to enter long, not because we're rejecting, but this is pretty much what I uh, tried to explain with uh, Riley this morning in the podcast. Basically on a breakout, what happens, but often, what will often happen, happen is this. We get above it. Now, this, this is re clear rejection and clear rejection here. But sometimes it will do this. Forget the rest of the chart. And look at this here. It will get above it. Then it will come down, test it. Sometimes it will bounce on it. Get a little bit underneath and then it will start rising. Now, this is what I thought. Sorry about this. This is what I thought it would, it would do. Come on. It would do... Um, after the FO or the, uh, the Fed's minutes, which would, would have been here. We come out, test it a little bit under, and then we could have gone up again. However, this was very close to the end of the day. Normal behavior where there's a, some profit taking before the end of the day. And then the next day, this is why I decided to swing. Next day was um, it took off. So, Rejection, there's some profit taking, and just look at it as a trampoline kind of thing. You take a swing and then it's going to bounce off something and go get the energy, um, accumulate the energy to, to pop above the line. So this, this line popping and expecting a breakout was my number one, um, my wonder one number one trigger. Why? Because I had set an alert ahead of time, looking at the chart, saying, "Well, if we get above this line, we get into the buyer's side." I'll show you that in a, in a second. And the second reason is the amount of calls the volume on the 42 calls that were expiring same week with less than two days before expiration was extremely high above 15,000 contracts so either all of these guys are wrong but the accumulation on the 42 on the 42 calls for this week was extremely high now, I talk a lot about buyers and sellers. I'll go back to the, um, 
to the one day chart to show you and you'll probably see what I mean basically what I mean is this all these guys here selling when they reach that yellow line right they all sell because the pressure is down on on the uh, on the sell side basically imagine a computer that says when it gets to 4167 you sell however if we get above it as as we get above this yellow line you know anything above that we are into the buyer side why there are no longer any reasons to sell it's not bouncing no it's getting through and the only way to get there is if we step above the trigger of uh, the downside trigger that's the breakout we're expecting and i'll show you exactly what i looked at for just entering the trade give me a second so this is what i like to do i take i pull up the chart for the 42 call because i was under the impression that if we broke 442 we would be in the money and quickly it would be very rewarding so i was looking at the 42 calls for this week on delta airlines if you want to know how to do this i uh, posted a video showing you how to do it on mobile and on your desktop to know how to pull up the chart for the option itself and look at this i mean don't look at the late uh, at thursday we were looking at this guy here which is on um on the 20th nine thousand contracts volume is nine thousand contracts the next day three thousand plus and the following day six thousand plus so all this i looked at you know three days while well, the current day and the two days before and we were up about fifteen thousand contracts we are still not into money yet and we have less than uh we have two days to go until expiration to me that was very bullish i mean if you look at the rest of the volume is it's pretty uh, pretty low on it so how to determine uh if it's if they're not selling the options the fact that they were accumulating in day after day after day adding more and more uh, volume as we are getting close to this breakout was really tempting saying well it, these are not people selling options these are probably people buying options and the other thing is we were very very close to that breakout line that was already prepped in the chart so again what you look for in the first place i still believe that price levels are super important so price levels where you have your resistance your support that you draw you're expecting something to happen on that line it may reject it again but because we were bullish on the whole market and remember that delta airlines is a dow component so it's kind of uh up there with the rest of the market and second was the volume on on calls that triggered the idea about going in so in the end just to recap we got in um on that particular day which was yesterday we got in at 27 cents for the calls we sold half i have a 100 percent rule and we were just above that i sold half at 55 cents which is 100 percent of what we invested and i sold the rest for 65 cents which was i believe 140 something percent on the remaining position i kept a runner or two um which keeping a runner or two is a good idea if you want to keep going uh if you're still bullish on the play sometimes you know this is good enough and we can move on but the idea behind the whole thing is to show you how we played the breakout and how we prepared ahead of time 
to see where this breakout was. So, well, I hope you learned something and uh, thanks for watching it and make sure to hit that little like button. And if you're not subscribed yet, just click that subscribe button. This is really helping. You can get your alerts sent to you directly when we post new things. And this is uh, obviously helping us out. So thanks for watching the show and I'll see you soon.